Bad dreams, huh? Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. That's what I'm here for, to deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy, Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins, Levy the trader. Oh yes, for years. Consider him a friend I did. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden, some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathisers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Loghain was very much against letting Orlesian Wardens in the Kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch and he let them in. So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the King, the first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The King himself went with the Wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Aldland's decree and the Wardens came back to Ferelden for good. People say it's because the Wardens have become terribly unpopular. Just soaking up ties and not doing a bleeding thing for the Kingdom. I say that's bollocks, as recent events have shown. Marek was a bit of a visionary. A powerful mind, that one. In his travels with the Wardens, he must have seen how important their cause was. And been moved by it. <laughs> that he was. Oh, his stomach's all a flutter. You're welcome. My family, well, past a bit checkered, to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. I ask for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honour. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honour. Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar. Said there might be useful things at the peak. 
but he never had the chance. A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fenwick, at your service, once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Wonderful. Thank the kind lady, won't you, boy? Thank you, kind lady. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. I await your command. At times, perhaps, a world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. For a time, but one can only remain a child for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. They did indeed. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely. But such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is unexpected. You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it eventually. I was sent to be the eyes of the Antom. The Arishok asked, what is the Blight? By his curiosity, I am now here. The one who commands the Antom, the body of the Kunari. Kunari have no kings. A portion of it. Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Yes. Never. I cannot go home. It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Does it matter? Very well. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I am told no others survived. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead. Nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers. And my sword was gone from my hand. I searched for it. And when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. I killed them. With my bare hands. 
I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Taventer unarmed and alone to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Near Lake Callanhad. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. live in an alienage? Was it very terrible? That is good to hear. I have never been to the Denerim alienage, but I hear that life is hard and there is so much squalor. In Orle, most Alvin servants live in the homes of their masters, often in great wealth and luxury. I've known Elven servants with servants of their own. A well-trained Alvin servant is highly valued in Orle. They are nimble and dexterous, and many people find them pleasing to look at. No, I did not mean it that way. Oh, my words were clumsily chosen. I did not mean to offend. I... I am sorry. Thank you, you have given me a lot to think about. Something on your mind? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. I suppose he did. It probably sounds stupid, but part of me wishes I was with him, in the battle. I feel like I abandoned him. Of course, I'd be dead then, wouldn't I? It's not like that would make him happier. I think he came from Hyeva, or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime, see about putting up something in his honor. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... That must have felt a lot like when I got sent to the Chantry. You mages don't even get a say in the matter after all. Thank you. It was good to talk about this with a friend. It means a lot to me. I'd like that. So would he, I think. Something on your mind? Of course. Did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Well, they were flying dogs, you see. Surprisingly strict parents, too. And devout Andrastians to boot. <laughs> all right, all right, I give. I cannot match your rapier wit. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow, and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. I was young and resentful and not very pious. Of course I blamed him. I remember screaming at him like a little child. Well, I was a child, so I doubt he was surprised. Arleman eventually married a young woman from Orlais which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Isle didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10, just as well. 
The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't her home to me by that point. She despised me. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence, I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming and raised my dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Something on your mind? Of course. Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? I'm not sure I do. Have I never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Make fun of you, dear lady. Perish the thought. Well, tell me. Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? Good. I hear it's quite painful. I remember one of the younger initiates did it on a dare once. And there was pointing and laughing. Oh, the humanity. I myself have also never done it. That. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know. Oh, that's funny. Such cruelty from such a beautiful woman. If you hear sobbing later, that's me crying myself to sleep. I... Did I say beautiful? Do you have any particular opinion on my sandwich? Then I'll have to think of something more provocative next time, won't I? Until then, we should get underway, no? I have many tearful nights in my tent to contemplate, after all. I... Have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? It's very nice, and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orle. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels. One year, feathers were all the rage, and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else, and actually wore live songbirds in her voluminous hair. The chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize, terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Yes, you can imagine what she looked like by the end of the evening. But I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? Oh, forgive me. My mind wanders so. It's just that I... I feel so comfortable talking to you. Like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. You see? You play along with me. Not many will do that. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. Thank you. I am honored that you feel that way. Oh, why, you little... Oh, you're so funny. Such rapier wit. Your furry friend here took offence at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed them a bari, the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Your fool dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hare 
is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. I am going to pretend I never heard that. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. He is certainly manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. So, all this time we've spent together, you know, the tragedy, the brushes with death, the constant battles with the whole blight looming over us. Will you miss it once it's over? <laughs> Uh, there'll be no more running for our lives, no more darkspawn, Ugh, and no more camping in the middle of nowhere. I know it might sound strange, considering we haven't known each other for very long, but I've come to care for you a great deal. I think maybe it's because we've gone through so much together. I, I don't know. Or maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I'm fooling myself. Am I? fooling myself? Or do you think you might ever feel the same way about me? So I fooled you, did I? <laughs> Good to know. That... That wasn't too soon, was it? Well, I'll have to arrange that then, won't I? Make us breath, but you're beautiful. I am a lucky man. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to what we were up to before, lest I forget why we're here. Going. 